actually there is no structured collaboration with the regulatory agency in Sweden, except for the dialogue meeting where they invite us for. But we have kind of taken, we have been pushing so much for several years to have a more structured patient involvement in the process. So, but for two years ago, we kind of took another approach. So we tried to convince the politicians in Sweden is that, that this patient involvement is really necessary to be able to, you know, uh, transform science and research to clinical trials to patient access. We did a project actually to try to convince uh, the regulatory body and also the politician that this patient involvement is really necessary. And in that pro uh, project, we had a dialogue meeting, we had roundtable discussions with all kinds of stakeholders, not just the regulatory body. It was the pharma company that were involved, it was the clinicians that were involved, it was politicians and decision makers and payers and, you know, all kinds of stakeholders. And we also uh, did a report, a blood cancer report. We had a debate article about it. And we also had a survey with uh, questionnaires to 400 politicians in Sweden, both national and regional. And we were also doing three films, one with the politicians stating that this patient involvement is really necessary. She used to be in the healthcare and uh, social care department uh, in Sweden. And also with a CLL patient that had been in a clinical trial. And also with the myeloma professor. All of them stating the necessary and importance for patients getting access to clinical trials and also getting access to new innovative treatments. I think it's crucial to be able actually to, to take science to the clinical trial and from that to really implement which is the part where we really have problems actually and with no patient access there is no actually no innovation so I think it's really crucial to be able to have access to new innovations. We really need, and we need this structure form of collaboration and patient involvement. Not to just, you know, tick in the box exercise. Well, I'm not happy at all the way it is, but I think, uh, the politicians, they have recently had um, uh, TLV, which is one of the HTA bodies in Sweden, to do this uh, investigation concerning combination therapy, uh, concerning uh, pricing, new uh, pricing models, ATMP, and also rare diseases. So I think that is kind of a start. And also we see that, you know, the stakeholders with the politician, they are more aware of that we need a more structured form of a patient uh, involvement. And for the moment, there is only one patient advocate that is in the board of TLV and she is support to it's not just the cancer, it's rheumatology, it's dermatology, you know, tology, it's heart and lung disease, it's allergies, it's all over. And she's supposed to know everything. And 
well, you can't be that educated, so no one can about everything. So, and what we really have been advocating for is that we want a patient advocate, we want an expert patient that they change from what kind of the disease area they are talking about. And we also want them to be in the full process to be able to do a written submission and also to be able to appeal the decision if the decision isn't in line with what the patient that voted the uh, organization think. So what we, our organization has started to do, although we are not, you know, invited in the way that we'd like to be, is to do the written submission when there is a, you know, when they are doing the health economy evaluation concerning our disease area. So at least we do it, although we are not asked to do it.